Before we can actually get into what the country is about, I think Mark Twain really summarized what the country was back in 1869. He said it was a desolate country whose soil is rich enough, but is given over wholly to weeds. A silent, mournful expanse, a desolation. We never saw a human being on the whole route, hardly a tree or a shrub anywhere. Even the olive tree and the cactus, those fast friends of a worthless soil, had almost deserted the country. So what we see here is Tel Aviv on its founding in 1909. Professor Seidman's grandfather happens to be in that picture as well. He's one of the founding 60 families of the city. And what we have today is Tel Aviv, a beautiful city, a beautiful metropolis. And before we go into the crux, we're going to show a little video about what Israel's been doing. One of the smallest countries on Earth, with one one-thousandth of the world's population, only 60 years old, under constant threat, and yet, relative to its population, Israel is the largest immigrant-absorbing nation on Earth. It has absorbed 350% of its population in 60 years. Israel is the only country in history to have revived an unspoken language. Since the founding of the state, Israel has more Nobel Prizes per capita than any other country. It has more laureates in real numbers than China, Mexico, and Spain. Israel has the eighth longest life expectancy, 80.7 years, longer than the UK, US, and Germany. Israeli films were nominated three years in a row for the Academy Awards Best Foreign Film. Israel is the only country that entered the 21st century with a net gain in its number of trees, even more remarkable, in an area that's mainly desert. Over 90% of Israeli homes use solar energy for hot water, the highest percentage in the world. Israel's scientific research institutions are ranked third in the world. Israel is ranked second in space sciences. Israel produces more scientific papers per capita than any other nation by a large margin. Israel has the third highest rate of entrepreneurship among women in the world. Israel has attracted the most venture capital investment per capita in the world, 30 times more than Europe. Israel leads the world in patents for medical equipment. Israel has more NASDAQ-listed companies than any country besides the U.S., more than all of Europe, India, China, and Japan combined. In proportion to its population, Israel has the largest number of startup companies in the world. In absolute numbers, Israel has more startups than any country other than the U.S. Israel is the only country whose indigenous population returned to its native land after 2,000 years of forced exile, there is only one Jewish state. So now going into modern Israeli history, Israel was founded in 1948 on May 14th. The state of Israel was proclaimed. The following day on May 15th, all the neighboring states declared war on Israel, a war that lasted for 15 months. In 1949, Chaim Weizmann, uh, who many of you may know his, his uh, product, TNT or Dynamite, was declared the first president, and it was, Israel was also admitted as the 59th member to the United Nations. Now to tell you more about the citizens of Israel, I pass it on to Isaac. Just to gain a little bit of understanding about the citizens of Israel and the four major religions, um, they have Jews, Muslims, Christians, and Druze. Um, also, to understand the sub-diversity of each of the backgrounds of these uh, four main religions in Israel, from Asia, we have immigrants from Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, uh, Lebanon, Syria, China, Yemen. From Africa, we have Ethiopia, Libya, Sudan, Egypt, Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. From Europe, we have pretty much all the European countries. Um, from South America, we have Argentina, Brazil, Venezuela, Paraguay, Colombia, Chile, Mexico, amongst many other. Um, it's also important to note that as a citizen of Israel, everyone has equal voting rights as, and everyone also has uh, equal uh, employment opportunities. Now, to learn where Israel is um, on a map relative to Europe, the Middle East, uh, Asia, and Africa, if you can see it, for those of you back there, it's that small red country over there. Um, relative to the United States, it's right in the center. Um, for those of you familiar with, with the states, um, it's about the size of New Jersey. Now, I'm going to talk about Tel Aviv. 
Tel Aviv is, uh, is, is known for its beaches, its bars, its cafes, its upscale shopping, great weather, uh, its cosmopolitan lifestyle. Um, it's basically a 24-hour city. And it's known as the city that never sleeps outside of New York. Um, it's a major tourist destination for domestic uh, and overseas visitors. It's also Israel's financial capital. Uh, it's a major performing arts center and business center. Uh, it's also, it also gained a beta world city status as one of the major economic hubs in the world. Um, some, some examples that I'd like to leave you off of uh, certain countries that, that house themselves in, in Tel Aviv are, there's a company called uh, Africa Israel, which owns 40% of the world's diamond mines. It's also home to the third largest diamond market in the world behind Antwerp and New York. Um, so for any of you guys, I'd say about there's a higher probability of 50% that the diamonds that you guys are wearing right now came through Israel or from this one company. Um, and also, uh, yesterday, coincidentally, Teva Pharmaceuticals was mentioned in the New York Times. Teva Pharmaceuticals is the world's largest generic pharmaceutical uh, manufacturer and distributor of generic, uh, of generic drugs. And so there are tons of other companies, but I'm going to hand it off to Mike to talk about the other major cities in Israel. Okay. Moving on to Haifa. Haifa is uh, a lesser known city to the casual uh, tourists, but uh, it's a very prominent city located in the northern part of Israel, very close to Lebanon, uh, a port city located on the, on the Mediterranean uh, coast. Haifa is very well known for the Baha'i Gardens, as you can see on the left. It's a very, uh, it's a beautiful set of gardens that's immaculately kept. It's very important to the Baha'i faith. And right here you can see uh, the Technion Institute, which is an extremely important uh, technical institute in Israel. It's known as the MIT of Israel. Uh, many research, uh, research development uh, technology scientists and engineers come from the Technion. And on the lower right hand corner you can see the Matam Center, which is uh, the high tech center in, in Haifa. You saw the video before of all the high tech in Israel. Here you have offices for Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, Intel, Motorola, some of the premier uh, high tech companies in the world. There's a few more pictures of the Baha'i Gardens and the, the, the Baha'i Temple in Haifa. Jerusalem. Jerusalem's located in the center of, of Israel, as you can see. And uh, it's Israel's capital, as well as a religious capital for the world, uh, for three pri primary religions, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And within these three religions, there's basically four main, um, main historical places. Here you can see the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the Western Wall, you can see here, uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, as well as the Temple Mount. Now, the Western Wall, you can see it's is the last remaining wall from the second Jewish temple, uh, built about 500 BCE. Um, it's very important to uh, one of the holiest places in the world for, for Jews, and many people come there, not just Jews, people from all over the world come there to pray and even put in notes into the, and, and prayers into the wall. The uh, Dome of the Rock is extremely important. It's one of the holiest places in the world for Muslims. It's, the, it's the place where Muslims believe that um, Muhammad ascended. As you can see here, some, some pictures of the Shuk, the market in, in, in Jerusalem, located in the old city, uh, just along with the other um, historical sites I've mentioned. Here you see they offer spices and all sorts of religious artifacts and the such. Um, you can see here the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is located also in the old city, very close to the Western Wall and the Dome of the Rock. It is the place where Christians believe that Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected. It's very ornate, very elaborate uh, church. People from all, all across the world uh, go there. Um, here's just a few pictures of the al Aqsa Mosque. And now I'd like to, like to talk a little bit about uh, Eilat. Eilat is in the southern tip of Israel, located just uh, on the, on the uh, coast by the Red Sea. On the we uh, western side you have Egypt. On the eastern side you have Jordan. Uh, it's very strategically located because it's through the Red Sea you can access uh, the Suez Canal. A lot's pretty much a resort town. Uh, tons of people 
from all over the world go there to just kind of hang out and enjoy the beach, the nightlife, the restaurants, and the luxurious hotels, as you can see, the Hilton Hotel. And I'd like to invite Seth to talk more about Israeli media. Uh, so I'm going to be covering a little of uh, Israeli pop culture, and Israelis in the media. For the most part, they'll all be people you're familiar with, but you might not associate being connected to Israel. First, we have Gene Simmons, who's the lead singer of KISS. If you don't know KISS, it's one of the best-selling bands of all time. He was actually born in Israel. His name's Kyan. His original name is Kyan Witt. Natalie Portman, you might uh, you probably know from Star Wars, as Princess Amidala, as also in Vita Vendetta. Uh, you might not know who he is, but you definitely need to know Borat, Bruno, or Ollie G, and Sasha Baron Cohen. And then lastly, kind of a Hollywood funny man, uh, Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, and most importantly, don't mess with the Zohan. And the next slide, uh, you probably won't be as familiar with the names, but equally as interested in the people. Um, <laughs> really, we have plenty of models, all kind of various ethnicities that uh, Isaac had spoken about. But one in particular in the bottom right, Barbara Raffaelli, is uh, very world famous. She's currently dating Leonardo DiCaprio. In 2009, <laughs> was selected to be on the covers of Swimsuit Sports Illustrated. For those not familiar with modeling, making the cover of Sports Illustrated is actually a really big deal for it. Um, next, we're going to talk about sports a little bit. And in Israel, there are two major sports, are basketball and football. And if you ever ask anyone in the country about either sport, their instant response is Maccabi Tel Aviv. So Maccabi Tel Aviv is a club that the soccer team constantly wins the Israeli division. <coughs> And their basketball team has won three European championships this decade. And for such a small country, that's actually a really big deal. Winning the European championship is essentially solidifying yourself as one of the best teams outside of the U.S., outside of the NBA, in the world. In the top right, you'll see Omar Caspi. He was the first Israeli basketball player drafted in the NBA. He was drafted in last year's draft with the number 23 pick. And then in the top middle, you'll see the opening ceremonies for the World Maccabi Games. They're held every four years in Israel. And essentially are known as the Jewish Olympics. Um, this past summer, they were held in Tel Aviv and consisted of 7,000 participants from over 50 countries around the world, making it the third largest sporting event participant-wise in the world behind the Winter Olympics and the Summer Olympics. And last, uh, I'll explain the food a little bit. We have uh, shawarma in the top right, in the bottom left, falafel. Falafel is kind of the nat national cuisine almost, or recognized as the national cuisine of Israel, and has got such popularity around the world that McDonald's actually, in certain countries, has instituted the mixed falafel. And then in the top left, you'll see a traditional Israeli breakfast. So some of you may not know this, but Simon is home to a few famous Israelis as well. <laughs> we have Professor Seidman, uh, Professor Horsky, um, and Professor Pinker, and our very own Seth. Our, our Seth played two and a half years uh, pro basketball in five countries, and some of you, from some of your home countries actually, China, Argentina, Australia, Denmark, and Israel. And he actually won gold in the Maccabee games. He was being really humble. He didn't want to let anyone know. And uh, that's him with his gold medal. <laughs> so to really let you know how impactful Israel has been in everyone's day-to-day -day lives in this room, I wanted to imagine a world without Israeli technology. No cell phones, no instant messaging capability, no Bluetooth, um, no zip compression technology. I'd be really, really bland. Now, it's, it's really strange, you know, we talk about this really small country, and you have to wonder, why is so much happening in such a small country? And I think there's a short clip that'll really answer that question. <laughs> 